We welcome you to Holy Spirit Catholic Community as we gather to celebrate the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. For those of you who are visiting here or joining us from home today, we are glad you have joined us and we wish to extend a warm welcome. Our celebrant today is Father Caleb. Our daily Mass schedule for the week of February 8th will be Tuesday, 7 a.m. at St. Joseph, Wednesday, 8.15 at St. Anthony, Thursday, 7 a.m. at St. Joseph, and Friday, 12 p.m. at St. Anthony's. Calling all junior high youth and Among Us Catholic Junior High Rally will be held here at Holy Spirit on Saturday, February 26th. Registrations need to be turned in by February 11th. For more information, call Jessica at the parish office. All high school age youth are invited to attend the Idaho Catholic Youth Convention in Boise on March 11th through the 13th. This is a great experience for the youth to go and meet other Catholic youth from around the state. Deadline for registrations is now February 11th. For more information, also please call Jessica at the parish office. Today we pray for the repose of the souls of Ramon Guadalupe and Ramon Jr. Pina. On a second note, for those of you who don't know me, I am Heidi Cook and I am the fundraising coordinator with Troop 315. As many might already be aware, today is Scout Sunday. Scouts of America designates the Sunday that falls before February 8th, uh, which is also known as Scouting Anniversary Day, as the primary date to recognize the contributions of young men and women 
and adults of scouting. We are honored to have here with us today the scouts, Cub Scouts, and adult leaders from Holy Spirit Catholic Community Troop 315. Ministering to youth, such as these extraordinary young men here, is a vital aspect of the church's life and mission. The church aspires to minister to young people in a variety of ways, through education, youth ministry, and boys and girls scouting programs. All of these are excellent opportunities for the church to pass on the gospel to our youth through its life and rich traditions of faith, morals, prayer, and service. Scouting is not just about getting to do the fun activities and go camping and make friends, but it also teaches leadership and citizenship skills, responsibility, self-confidence, academics through merit badges, and helps form strong family values that help influence and shape their adult lives. Troop 315 has a long time shared mission in serving others. Every year, they help put together and distribute holiday food baskets for families staying at AIDS for Friends. They collect food for the Idaho Food Bank. They visit the assisted living homes during the Christmas holiday season and deliver little Christmas goodie bags and sing Christmas carols. They help cook and serve meals to the homeless at the homeless encampment and the less fortunate at our brother's table. And even just yesterday morning, they bundled up and they went snowshoeing in 17 degree weather to help collect beaver data for the watershed guardians. Service to others is never a simple act, especially in today's busy world. John 13, 34 says, to serve God is to serve others, and it is the greatest form of charity, the pure love of Christ. With that said, after Mass, we would like, um, if any of you would like any more information, please um, join us at the back and we can give you information um, if you would like to be a scout or even help as a adult leadership. We want to thank you all for your continued sponsorship and support and we would love to welcome you to our scouting family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate the sacred mysteries as we acknowledge our sins. I confess. Amen. 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 Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, of the Virgin, all 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the help of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne with the train of his garment filling the temple. 
Seraphim were stationed above. They cried out one to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook, and the house was filled with smoke. And then I said, Woe is to me, I'm doomed, for I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now this has touched your lips. Your wickedness is removed. Your sin purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said. Send me. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I'm reminding you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, which you indeed received and in which you also stand. Through it, you are also being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received. 
that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all of the apostles. Last of all, as to one born abnormally, he appeared to me, for I am the least of the apostles, not fit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me has not been ineffective. Indeed, I have toiled harder than all of them, and not I, however, but the grace of God that is within me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach, and so you believed the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing. But at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come to help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish, they had seized him and all those with him. And likewise, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon, said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. The blessed Lord Jesus desires that his disciples go deep. That is, that they don't remain in the shallow. 
and not just in water. But they are to be those, his disciples, who go into the deep questions of life and not just to be content to remain in the shallow questions and things of life. The blessed Lord Jesus is calling disciples to himself. And he knows that so often in our world we get stuck in the shallow things. Not that shallow things aren't important, but they're not the important things. It's so easy just to remain in the shallow because the shallow catches our attention. In the ocean, the shallows are literally are where all of the, most of the beauty is. But there's not many big fish there. Put out into the deep, he calls his disciples into us. To go out into the, to the deep areas of life where people are asking real, profound, deep questions. What is my life really about? Is this it? What's the purpose of my life? Does anybody even care that I'm here? Can my past be forgiven? And can I ever be loved and be a part of the community based upon what I've done? Those are deep and real questions that take an intentional relationship to go into the deep. As a culture, we are really good at the shallow. Again, not that everything in the shallow is unimportant. In 2018, according to the CDC website, 700,000 people in our world committed suicide. That was just in 2018, and it's increased in a sense. So do the math. 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. It's almost 3 million. Most of them young people. Not all of them. The blessed Lord Jesus knows that there is something in, in the deep of us as human beings, something deep in there and profound that is a place where he wants to be. He wants to be there. He wants to go to that profound place to bring redemption and truth and mercy and healing and love, all of those things that all of his miracles were symbols of, his desire to set us free from. He wants his disciples to move away from getting stuck in just the shallow things, but go to those deep places and bring the gospel. That's what St. Paul said today in his readings. He said, I come to remind you of the gospel that I preached. That's the most important thing. That Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead, that all of us could experience a type of redemption and freedom that this world cannot offer. And he wants to send disciples out there to proclaim this gospel. Jesus says, if you become my disciple, if you remain my disciple, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Free from what? Free from sin, certainly. But I think there's also more to that. Jesus wants to set us free from all of those wages of sin that burden us at a deep, profound level and bring us down and shackle us. And it's in these profound relationships that Jesus will have that he's going to go deep in, into relationship with people and set them free on a profound level. He wants that for you and for me. Do you remember the story of the Samaritan woman at the well? Remember that story? There's a woman at a well, and Jesus came up to her, and he says, woman, can, can I have something to drink? And very instantly, this very shallow conversation starts to take place because she's so used to being just judged on a shallow level. And Jesus very quickly goes deep with her. He reveals, he understands her deep wound and 
brings it up that she had been married five times. She had been deeply hurt by, by bad men in her life. And Jesus goes there. And the end of that encounter, she runs back to town and she says, come and see the man who's told me everything that I've done. And the subtext is, and set me free from it. He's the Messiah. Because he took the time to see past what the world couldn't see and to find a wounded human being in need of mercy and love and redemption. Put out into the deep, he says to the disciples. To the deep. Last Sunday, if you were here, I posed the question to you all. Are you ready to become an apostle? Am I ready to be one of these called to go out? And so I ask it again today. Are you? <laughs> now, you all are amazing because you're here and, and I don't mean in any way to come across like I'm like pointing fingers at you. I'm, I'm not because you're here. But there's so many who aren't who are needing, needing the love and care of the gospel that's willing just to cut through it all and just get to the heart. So thank you for being here and thank you for being a disciple. But now it's time for us to think what does that discipleship mean? In the first reading, Isaiah, he's being asked by God to be that kind of apostle, a disciple, to go to his own brothers and sisters and to proclaim to them the, God, the message of God's mercy and redemption and repentance. And he's like, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> he's like, God, uh, I just joined the basketball league. Uh, uh, I have all kinds of, uh, I'm not your guy. Seriously, like don't. God's like, what are you talking about? Stop making excuses, Isaiah. It's not about what you think you, are, you can't do. It's about what God knows that he can do in and through you. So would you just let yourself go for a minute and let God work in you and through you? Because he knows you and is prepared to do something far more profound than you could ever dream for yourself. Simon in the boat today, when he witnessed this great miracle, it's like he, he knew what Jesus was doing. It's, he, he was getting ready for, hey, Peter, will you follow me? And before he, Jesus asked a question, Simon falls to the knees of Jesus and says, get away from me. I know where this is going. I'm not your guy. I'm not your dude. That's what probably what the original Greek said. I'm not your guy. You don't want me. I can't do what you're asking. Simon, stop. It's not about what you think you can or can't do. Open yourself to what God is capable of doing in you and through you. And for you, God is able to do incredible things in you and through you. He wants to use you and me now and go out into a world that really needs the gospel. And the good news is that Isaiah said yes. Simon Peter said yes. St. Paul said yes. Let's say yes. All right. That's a lot for a Sunday morning. But again, brothers and sisters, something amazing is here. And there is great need for the work of God to continue in the lives of people. It's about the lives of people and their freedom and salvation. That is no small thing. So, shall we go? Shall we do it? I don't know, it's kind of nerve, kind of nerve wracking question. Bring that question to the altar today with you. God loves you. 
God knows you and is capable of doing incredible things in and through us. Let us stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God from not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came back from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was the fire of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the cross of Christ. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now offer our prayers and our petitions to God, trusting that He hears us. We pray for Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all bishops, that they listen and speak boldly as the Church gathers in Synod. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who govern our country, and for all those entrusted with the common good for our people and country, lead them to act with wisdom and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick and the suffering, that healing may come through the intercession of Our Lady of Lords, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For protection and graces during this time of pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who gather at this table, that we work together for the greater glory of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's take a moment of quiet and I invite you to call to mind maybe somebody or people whom you know who are, who are burdened in this life, those who are struggling. I invite you to place them now before the Lord. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bestow a heavenly grace upon all of those who are heavily laden and burdened. They would have strength to hold on. They may know your providential and fatherly care for them. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant us, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son gathered in our midst, present to us in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop and all the clergy. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and martyrs, with St. Anthony and with all the saints, 
we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
for all who are participating in this Mass at home. Let us now pray the spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have willed us that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah is our song number 172. 